the past few times I've took showers, like after cutting my hair, um, a lot of my hair has been falling out. And I saw a video uh, by this dude, what I've learned, like a, a while ago, a few months ago. And he was talking about hair loss. And long story short, a lot of new science is finding out that like hair loss can actually be mitigated by increasing blood flow to the scalp. Basically, like, my, my mom was has constantly been telling me, like, to keep up with my hair, and she was giving me this lecture again, because I, I told her, like, oh, every time I'm in the shower, I, I can lose, like, you know, strand, like, 20 different, like, strands of hair, like, you know, when I'm, like, rubbing the shampoo through my hair, I'm, like, losing some hairs, you know, like, 15 to 25 strands of hair I'm able to, like, pull out pretty easily, you know? And um, I, I, I tell her about like, hey, this is what I found. This is massaging. It actually works. You know, the whole aspect of social grooming kind of fixes like, like 40% of all problems that people have with their health, social grooming fixes. It's just the problem with modern social life is that social grooming is dead. And my mom was like, Oh yeah, we used to do head massages in India where they'd add oil to, to your head and they do these like super comfortable massages where they like use their fingers to like poke your head and like like sift through it kind of. And it, it was like a super comfortable thing and it feels really good. And my, my mom did it to me and it was like, oh, that feels so good. And I'm like, wow, no wonder it feels so good because social grooming, grooming is supposed to feel good. And it's, it feels good for a reason because there's benefits for it and it prevents hair loss. And there was even like videos they watched as kids, like black and white videos. My mom showed me a black and white video on YouTube. It was a super popular video that all the kids watched where they like get the kids to watch it. So that way they can convince the kids like, hey, the adults want to put oil in your head, basically. That, like shampoo usually will strip the oils away from your scalp, the natural oils away. And then you'll use things like conditioner to put oils back into it, you know, because it's a dry scalp. But... What they did in India is they said, don't worry about doing all that. Let's add more oil into your scalp. And then we'll get one of these people who know what they're doing to like sift their fingers through your hair repeatedly, like really, really fast, you know? India is actually, is actually ahead of its time in a lot of ways. And it's not just India, it's a lot of places, but like I know more about India because my parents, they tell me a lot of stories. My parents had some really cool stories. I don't know why they don't ever like brag about it. I don't know why they don't they don't like go deep into it. They never tell me unless I like provoke them or unless something comes up. It's like they never they would never tell me stories about India when I was little. I only found out recently, like they used to live like chimps used to live right by my parents' village, and like these little chimps would come in like families of like four or so. And they'd like raid all the homes in the area. They'd like go through the fridge and all that stuff. Like they were very intelligent the way they did everything. And even though they were super small, like a foot or two tall, they were super strong and they knew like, okay, don't touch, don't, don't mess with the, don't mess with the, um, what's it called? The, uh, chimps or the monkeys or whatever they were. She didn't know exactly what they were, but like they'd go through, they'd take the food and like, um, the adults would like the adult monkeys would like take the fruits and stuff and hand it to the kids they take like the bottles of milk they're super intelligent the way they did it they take the bottles of milk open the cap drink it like drink like a quarter gallon put it back down and like take as much as they can carry and my mom and her brother and her sister and the rest of their family they would like all stand in the corner like quietly and just let them take what they want and leave because, like, as a human, you also carry the threat of violence, so they're not going to come to you if they don't have to. And, like, maybe when I was littler, I would have been like, hey, if I was 14, I would have been like, these monkeys are two feet tall, just kick them. But that's a terrible decision. I know better now, like, trust me when I say that was the best move to, um, to, like, let them let them do their thing let them take what they want because these chimps like they travel in packs they travel in families and they all raid together 
And you know what would happen? My mom told me, like, I asked, like, what would happen if, like, you guys try to, like, attack one of the chimps? They would just snatch somebody up. They would snatch up one of the kids or whatever and just take them. What happened next? I don't know. My mom didn't continue the story after that. I figured I shouldn't ask. Like, if she felt like telling me, then she would have told me. But yeah, staying in the corner and minding your own business, good call. The small ones, you know, we could probably beat in a fight, but it'll be a fight to the death in some cases. Are you willing to lose a few fingers or a few teeth just to protect like 20 cents of food? Because that's how much the food costs in, in American money. Things are cheaper in India, even still. Oh, hold up, hold up one sec.